Good evening and welcome to the evening office. We're happy you're joining us and tonight we commemorate St. Mark the Evangelist. This is a major feast day on the church's calendar. As we've been doing throughout Eastertide, we begin the office with the Regina Celi, which is Latin for Heavenly Queen. And so please pray this along with me. O Queen of Heaven, be joyful, alleluia. For he whom so meekly thou bearest, alleluia, hath arisen as he promised, alleluia. Pray for us to the Father, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, didst, vou didst vouchsafe to give gladness to the world, Grant, we beseech thee, that we, being holpen by the Virgin Mary, his mother, may attain unto the joys of everlasting life, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the office proper begins on page 63 of the Book of Common Prayer with the invitatory. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now, keep your marker on that page, because you'll have to go back to it. But right now, we will recite the Pascha Nostrum together, which is found on page 46 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ is risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia! The psalm appointed for tonight is Psalm 2 and can be found on page 586 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read together. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him. Lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever, ever shall be, world without end. end. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. 
When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now if you turn to page 50 of the Book of Common Prayer and recite with me canticle number 4, the Benedictus Dominus Deus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. 
He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now if you turn to page 52 of the prayer book and recite together Canticle number 7, the Te Deum Laudamus. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, Help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, Thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of thy people, grant that when we hear his voice we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, who by the hand of Mark the Evangelist hast given to thy church the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we thank thee for this witness and pray that we may be firmly grounded in its truth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As I said, tonight we celebrate the feast of St. Mark the Evangelist. <clears throat> A disciple of Jesus, named Mark, appears in several places in the New Testament. If all references to Mark can be accepted as referring to the same person, we learn that he was the son of a woman who owned a house in Jerusalem, perhaps the same house in which Jesus ate the Last Supper with his disciples. Mark may have been the young man who fled naked when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. In his letter to the Colossians, Paul refers to Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, who was with him in his imprisonment. Mark set out with Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, but he turned back for reasons which failed to satisfy Paul. When another journey was planned, Paul refused to have Mark with him. Instead, Mark went with Barnabas to Cyprus. The breach between Paul and Mark was later healed, and Mark became one of Paul's companions in Rome, as well as a close friend of Peter's. An early tradition recorded by Papias, Bishop of Hierapolis in Asia Minor at the beginning of the second century, names Mark as the author of the gospel bearing his name. This tradition, which holds that Mark drew his information from the teaching of Peter, is generally accepted. In his first letter, Peter refers to my son Mark, which shows a very close relationship between the two men. The Church of Alexandria in Egypt claimed Mark as its first bishop and most illustrious martyr. And the great church of St. Mark in Venice commemorates the disciple who progressed from turning back while on a missionary journey with Paul and Barnabas to proclaiming in his gospel Jesus of Nazareth as the Son of God and bearing witness to that faith in his later life as friend and companion to the apostles Peter and Paul. And I think it's interesting St. Mark starts the gospel, his gospel, with just sort of a quick progression of the entire salvation history of the people of God, and he condenses it all into a few paragraphs, really, and that's so typical of Mark. He always cuts right to the chase. And I think our lessons appointed for this evening um, are about a lot of things, but one of the things that they're about is that our life in Christ and our lives together in the church are always collegial and collaborative. And I think Mark may have learned that the hard way, but <clears throat> I think anyone who worked with Paul may have learned that the hard way. But in the end, he did collaborate with Peter and Paul. Um, but I also think it's interesting to, to reflect on, for a moment on the fact that we're all called to be, um, to collaborate with one another and be collegial in our ministries and our vocations in the one church. Um, and it's interesting because I always think in my head that people are divided into Gospel of Mark people, Gospel of Matthew people, Gospel of Luke people, and Gospel of John people. Gospel of Matthew people, as I said, they like things cut and dry, and the way Mark tells his story is quite cut and dry. He's always saying, and then immediately Jesus did this, and then immediately Jesus did that. Those are no-nonsense Christians. Um, and then there's, of course, Matthew, who's much more concerned with uh, lineage and genealogy and establishing a history of, what, of what, is, what Jesus is doing in the gospel. And then there's Luke, who writes so many beautiful stories that we love so much, the Magnificat, the Christmas story we hear on Christmas Eve with the angels and the shepherds and the creche and the night with the moon shining and the star overhead. And then, of course, there's my favorite, which is John. And John was sort of writing about the cosmic Christ. He was the poet. And so, as I said, there are lots of different kinds of Christians. You can divide them into all sorts of ways, but that's one way of dividing them up. And the wonderful thing is that tonight, I think we're reminded in these lessons that while we all have our differences in our own gifts and, um, and attitudes that we bring to the various ministries and vocations we have in Christ's church, that eventually, through God's grace, they're all brought together 
to make one beautiful message and bring in one wonderful heavenly kingdom eventually. So may Mark pray for us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know thee as thou art revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of thy love. Amen. Amen. O God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech thee graciously to behold and bless those whom we love, now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to thee, may be bound together by thy love in the communion of thy Holy Spirit and in the fellowship of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join with me in saying the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. May the divine help remain with us always. And with our absent brothers and sisters.